Hey, horse friends, welcome back to a Your Horse Fitness Q&A. So if you're just joining me, a quick reminder, you can drop your questions in the chat and we'll answer whatever questions come up. First, I hope you guys are doing great. If you are in an area where you're struggling with the weather right now and you're doing your darndest to keep your horse sort of fit, I feel you. I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I have, it, we're in the rainy season here in California and I don't have a covered arena. So it's a lot of mud and a lot of navigating the weather. So I feel you. I'm right there with you. Um, I had a question come in from a listener this week. They were working on exercise number 16 in my book, 55 Corrective Exercises for Horses. Some of you probably know that one. It's the straddle a single pole exercise. And uh, it's where you ask the horse to have one pair of legs on either set of the pole. The pole is running down their midline on the ground. It's an incredibly cool exercise if you've tried it with your horse. Sometimes you get really surprising results, like big releases, licking and chewing lower in the neck. Sometimes their breathing pattern changes. It's really a neat exercise. There are somehow, however, some horses, like our the person who rode in, when they are introduced to the exercise, they are very apprehensive about having the pole underneath their midline. And so the first thing I want to tell this uh, viewer and listener is that don't worry, you're not alone. This I would say it's not totally abnormal to see this. Some horses, for a variety of reasons, one reason that I see a lot is hor horses that have been trained to cross poles really um, correctly and in balance and not hit the poles. And they're the type of horses that once they've learned the task, they don't like feeling like they're doing the task wrong. Sometimes those horses can get very nervous or antsy about this idea of standing with the pole under their belly. It's something they've never done. It feels very uh, counter to everything they've been trained to do. And it can make them kind of anxious. Uh, sometimes that's not the case. And your horse, for whatever reason, just not psyched about the pole under their midline. So the first thing I usually recommend for people is to approach it vertically rather than trying to straddle it as the exercise is shown. You're trying to just stop with the pull under their belly this way. So the front legs are on one side and the rear legs are on the other. And you're not forcing them to stand there. Obviously, just take your time. They all come around eventually to getting comfortable with the pull under their belly. It's not with this straddle a pole exercise, it is not unusual for some horses to only be willing to straddle the pole with their front feet on either side um, for you know weeks sometimes before they want to bring the back legs into the equation. So don't worry, do not rush it. That's counterintuitive. With any of these exercises, it is never about getting the exercise perfect, it is about the stimulus that it offers your horse. So even though you might get frustrated because you're like, well, this exercise doesn't look like it does in the book. That's not the point. The point is your horse is getting a lot of value out of working through the balance and symmetry and maybe letting go areas of tension in their body, which sometimes results in a less than perfect picture in terms of executing the exercise. But it's about the stimulus we're giving their body in these moments. So that is specific to straddle a single pull take your time. There is no rush. Some horses are very apprehensive to have the pole underneath them. And obviously we don't force that, just allow them to take their time with it. It also helps to forget the pole. And with some of these really anxious horses to use something softer, like even a rope. I have sometimes have used a thick rope in place of the pole and, or something tubular shaped like a sandbag or something that is a little bit more flexible and it's not it, it, sometimes just changing the material has miraculous results with horses so uh so you can give that a try as well we also had a listener send me an email looking for some exercise suggestions on a horse with a sore back um kind of like a chronically recurring sore back and this person wanted exercises to strengthen the top line so that the back would stop getting sore. 
Um, oh, great, great comment. Actually, yeah, one of our viewers just suggested using a pool noodle that that for the previous exercise we were just talking about those foam noodles you can get at like a department store that that's actually a good substitute for a hard wooden pole. Um, okay, so back to the sore back. So this person and, and I get inquiries a lot about sore backs. It is unfortunately, if your horse has any gait aberration, in my opinion, if they have sore feet, if they have muscular imbalance, it, a lot of times if they have, um, they're, you know, working through some emotional um, issues, they're new to training, everything is like high stimulus, it'll all end up in the back. Um, unfortunately, at least that's my experience, the back kind of reflects what's going on in the rest of the body. So with horses who have chronically, like chronically reoccurring sore backs, a lot of the times the problem is not strength. So in many of these cases, these horses don't need to get stronger backs and necks as much as they need to resolve the biomechanical issue that's putting strain on their back. And I know that kind of sounds like we're getting into the weeds, but for example, I see a lot of times um, in like long distance trail horses, if the horse travels with a, a little bit crooked, you know, maybe their hips drift off, they prefer to kind of drift off to one side um, and that's their mode of travel. After a certain number of miles, that torque on the body, that misalignment will cause tension that turns into soreness. But the soreness is not the result of a weak muscle. Strong muscles can get sore and frequently do. So when a horse that is experiencing a sore back, if we go about trying to strengthen the back, like sometimes people will want to uh, maybe, you know, put the horse in side reins and lunge it in a certain way to strengthen the back. What commonly happens is you just add tension to an area that's already aggravated. So as I said, we want to figure out what is contributing, what are contributing factors. Um, a lot of times if we just start kind of narrowing down, we can get to it. So for example, in the long distance trail horse, I was talking about a lot of times a horse will have a certain um, time duration or uh, distance duration after which their back starts to get sore. And that's a useful data point. Okay, so we can start to say, is this a body alignment issue? Is this an, a repetitive motion issue? Like this horse just needs to change up its gates more. Remember, the goal is to avoid tension. So in the case of this viewer who wrote in, and in many of these cases, you know, it, it's very more specific. I'm not saying this applies all the time, but commonly what we want to do is try to alleviate the tension in the back. It's not to target that area and try to force it to become stronger. Sometimes the back is overworking. You know, the back is a movement muscle. Sometimes it's overworking because it's trying to stabilize the horse. If it's a horse that kind of has, you know, high headed and, and is kind of noodly through its body and it's a little bit disorganized, sometimes the back is trying to like stabilize the posture and move the horse forward. That'll create soreness. Uh, but again, the problem isn't a weak a weakness in the back. The problem is that the back is trying to do too many things. So very long answer to the question of what exercises should we do for a back that's getting sore. What I want to remind people is don't get laser focused on the back because usually it's just an issue from elsewhere that is showing up in the back. Okay, and then lastly, I have to consult my notes so that I don't forget. We had, um, I had a, a few of you write in to say, you know, to ask for some guidance. And those of you in snowy Canada, really snowy Canada, for example, or, you know, you don't have an indoor arena, you know, what exercises should you be prioritizing with your very limited amount of tolerable weather? Um, and again, my take home message is the body will always respond better to consistent stimulus than trying to do like a hero workout once a week when the weather allows. And then the rest of the time, the horse is mostly sedentary, you know, as dictated by short daylight, frozen ground, etc. So I know it's not exciting stuff, but it is far more productive for the horse's metabolic system and the musculoskeletal system 
to come out and simply walk briskly with purpose uninterrupted for 25 to 30 minutes. Um, if you have an arena and you're able to, you know, make some patterns while you're walking them in hand or from their back, that's better. But if you don't, and you can only go in straight line up and down your frozen driveway, that's fine too. My point is if you can do that for five, six days a week, it's actually better than getting on on Saturday when the sun pops out for a minute and maybe the ground thaws and you want to do a lot of like lateral movements and transitions between the gates and things that we know to be good for the horse's body because the horse's uh, muscular, especially the postural muscles are not in an activated state. If you've had an irregular schedule to this point during the winter. So what you're trying to do is just keep those baseline metabolic systems primed, so to speak, and keep the postural muscles activated so that as the weather improves moving into spring, you can seamlessly just start to increase the horse's workload. Um, so not exciting stuff, but the, the takeaway is don't worry about being like choosing the best exercises. It is really about just bundling yourself up and being consistent, but not with like exciting stuff. And it doesn't have to be super long duration. You're aiming for 25 to 30 minutes consistently. That's really the key. And sort of along these lines, and I'll just finish with this point, but sort of along these lines, I had um, a, a viewer write in who unfortunately is dealing with quite a rash of injuries. Her horse has torn, I think over the last few years, a horse has torn the peroneus tertius muscle at least twice. Um, and this has left the horse stall confined for many months. And now the question is, how do we begin to recondition this horse? And it's a young horse. So, so, you know, the body's still pretty resilient. Um, so I encourage this person to ask the vet while she's finishing up these last bits of stall confinement, can she begin uh, stationary exercises? And again, these are things that outwardly it's hard to tell if they're taking effect, but they do take effect. We have so many studies now that prove that multiple little rounds of what we call stationary exercises, but these are your pelvic tucks, your dynamic stretches or carrot stretches as they are commonly known, hind leg stretches or mobility exercises, a lot of Jim Masterson's techniques, the wither wiggle, all these kinds of things where you're not putting the body in movement, but you are asking for um, responses from the horse. If you can do those three, four, five times a day, and they're really short. I mean, we're talking, you know, a minute, two minutes each time you do them. If you can do that during those last phases of stall confinement, your horse is going to be so much better off to begin the walk rehab and then adding the trot and then eventually the canter. Now, the thing is, because vets are, you know, a lot of them are in our areas are general practitioners, they might not know to recommend to you to do these stationary exercises. So it is always a good idea. I, I don't want any of you to deal with injury or stall confinement. I hope that never happens. But if it does, ask the vet, okay, my horse is injured. They need to be confined. Can I do stationary exercises? Uh, because it, it's something that commonly doesn't come with the diagnosis. But many times if you press and you present some ideas about what you might want to do with the horse, the vet says, oh yeah, that's a good idea. You know, can't hurt. Give it a try. Definitely do it if you get the green light. Um, but that advocacy, it falls on us as owners. So just to take home to, to do that because the body, taking care of the body, keeping everything activated, then allows us to condition it when we get the, the go ahead. So um, thanks for tuning in to Q&A. You can continue to drop questions in the chat after this recording gets posted. And I want to thank my folks over at Redmond Equine. You can get a discount, 20% off their minerals for you and your horses. RedmondEquine.com with the code JECB2020 at checkout.